In England in the early 15th century, there was a bit of a crisis. Henry IV had just seized the throne from Richard II, but he was an unpopular ruler. Cousins of his challenged his right to rule, the Welsh rose up and fought for their independence, and various lords rebelled. During all of this, three men met to decide on the fate of England should they be victorious. Owen Glendower, the leader of the Welsh rebels, Henry Percy, the Earl of Northumberland, and Edward Mortimer, a great-grandson of Edward III. They agreed that when Henry IV would be defeated, England would be partitioned between them, and it could well have happened. The French after all were aiding the Welsh, and the Percys were leading a huge army from the north, so for a while it seemed likely that England would have ceased to exist. So a little background is in order here, as there are many family ties that need to be established. To fully understand this period, you need to go back to Edward III, and he had five children, the Black Prince, Lionel Duke of Clarence, John of Gaunt, Edmund Duke of York, and Thomas of Woodstock. The Black Prince died before Edward, so the crown passed on to his son, Richard II. This family would, for the next hundred or so years, throw England into chaos, as their lines formed what would be the houses of York and Lancaster. But for this story, all what you need to know is the Black Prince died before Edward, so the crown passed on to his son, Richard II. Richard's rule, like Henry's later, was marked by turmoil, like the Peasants' Revolt, and failures and wars against France and Scotland. During it all, the King's uncle, John of Gaunt, held a lot of power as one of the wealthiest men in England, and he largely kept the country united. But he too was unpopular, and this brings me to another little bit of alternative history that I don't think many people know. John of Gaunt, because he was married to Constance of Castile, also claimed the throne of Castile. So he prepared to invade and married off his daughter to the King of Portugal. And this was the beginning of the Anglo-Portuguese alliance, the oldest alliance in the world. John and the Portuguese did in fact invade, but the Castilians refused to meet them on the field, and starvation and disease forced John to retreat. But maybe an Englishman could have been a king in Spain. Anyway, back to Richard. When John of Gaunt died, Richard confiscated his lands off him, angering John's son, Henry Bolingbroke. Henry had been part of an earlier rebellion, but in 1399, he was able to unite many disgruntled lords, and he successfully ousted Richard and took the crown for himself. So, Henry IV was now king, but he was the son of Edward III's third son, not his second. So, another descendant of Edward III you need to keep in mind for later on is Edmund Mortimer. His father was the Earl of March, which was a region in between England and Wales, and his mother was Philippa Plantagenet, the daughter of Lionel of Antwerp. So, he was Henry's cousin, and in some regards his family, the Mortimers, had a better claim to the throne, because Lionel of Antwerp was Edward's second son. But during the rebellion against Richard, the Mortimers backed Henry in seizing the throne. As for Edmund, his father and elder brother died, leaving his young nephew as the Earl of March, while his sister, Elizabeth, married Henry Hotspur Percy. Henry Hotspur Percy, who I'll just call Hotspur, belonged to the powerful Percy family of Northern England, and they too joined in the rebellion against Richard II. As such, they were given a number of privileges when Henry IV took the throne, but this would change later on, but keep these two men in mind for later on, Edmund Mortimer, and Henry Hotspur Percy. Meanwhile, Henry IV faced a number of other problems, like the growing Lollard heresy, but more than that, over in Wales there was a land dispute between Owen Gwyndawa and Baron Grey de Ruthen. Now, Ruthen was a prominent ally of Henry, and he used his new position within the king's court to claim the disputed land back from Owen. So, with a couple of followers, including the ancestors of the Tudor dynasty, Owen rose up in 1400. As King Henry was already fighting the Scots, the Welsh were able to gain some early victories. So, Henry recruited help from his old ally, Henry Percy, and his son Hotspur. Now, Hotspur by this point had already begun to fall out with the king. For instance, there were unpaid wages during his wars with the Scots, Hotspur wasn't given land in Cumberland as promised, then Henry kept on promoting his own son over Hotspur, the king couldn't successfully subdue the Welsh Rebellion, and refused to listen to Hotspur's calls for peace. Then, at the Battle of Bryn Glas, Owen Glendower captured Edmund Mortimer in battle. Henry believed that Edmund was captured on purpose, and was part of a scheme, so he refused to allow Hotspur to make attempts to ransom his brother-in-law. This pushed Hotspur over the edge, and he changed allegiances, taking up arms against the throne, calling Henry IV tyrannical. 
Edmund Mortimer of course joined Hotspur, but also united with Owen Glendower and married his daughter in late 1402. Henry IV was actually en route to join Percy when he heard the news, so he had to quickly prepare for battle. The two sides met at Shrewsbury in July 1403, and they were pretty evenly matched with around 14,000 men each. Had Hotspur's father brought his forces south quicker, maybe the battle would have went in favour of the rebels, but the fighting was intensive and the royal forces only won because Hotspur lifted his visor and was struck by an arrow in the face. Had they succeeded, Mortimer claimed to have wanted to restore Richard II to the throne, but nobody knew if he was alive. Yet, if he was dead, as he was, the next in line would be Mortimer's nephew, who was also called Edmund Mortimer, to make things confusing. He, however, was just a young boy, and at this point, he had been put in custody at Windsor. There would be a later plot to abduct the young Earl and bring him back to Wales, but after escaping, he was soon recaptured. Although Hotspur was killed, the Glendower, Mortimer and Percy alliance survived this defeat, and this is when they agreed to divide up the English kingdom between themselves. In early 1405, the tripartite indenture was signed, which, if successful, would have made Mortimer the ruler of the south, Percy the north, and Glendower Wales in parts of the west. Meanwhile, Henry introduced harsh anti-Welsh legislation, like forbidding English and Welsh to marry which just encouraged more people to join in the rebellion as they captured Cardiff and Newport. Then the Welsh began receiving help from England's rivals abroad, like France and Brittany. So troops from the continent were helping the growing rebels, English lords on the borders were largely giving up the fight, potentially Scottish assistance could have arrived, and the three rebel leaders were set to carve England up. So in 1405, this seemed like a great possibility. French forces joined the Welsh as they moved into England, where they encountered an English force near Hereford. But just a mile away from one another, they decided not to battle for some unknown reason, and then they just retreated. This, for the rebels, may have been the start of the end, as the court in France now favoured peace with the English and began to withdraw their support. The English then landed in Anglesey in Wales, Mortimer seemingly retreated from the war in distress, and the rebel forces were now being pushed back. In the north, Percy joined in another rebellion led by the Archbishop of York, but this was doomed to fail from the beginning, and while the Archbishop was captured and executed, Percy fled to Scotland. So in less than a year, the rebels went from plotting to divide up England, to being in exile, distressed, and on the retreat. Percy would return to England at the head of an invasion force in 1408, but was quickly defeated at Bramham Moor, and the Percys were ousted from power. Yet when Henry IV died, Henry V would later restore the son of Hotspur to power in the north. This was a pretty savvy political move, because his heir, Henry VI, would later have to fight the Yorkists in the Wars of the Roses, and the Percys remained staunch Lancastrians throughout. The Mortimers, however, weren't so fortunate. Their family was stripped of their title, Earl of March, and this title instead went to Richard of York. This, of course, was not such a savvy move, as Richard of York would be the man to start the Wars of the Roses against Henry VI. As for Owen Glendower, he seemingly disappeared off the face of the earth. No one knows exactly what happened to him. As for his title, the Prince of Wales, it is still used by the heir presumptive of the English crown. Yet, for all of you alternative history fans out there, you could potentially draw up a new map of medieval Europe, one in which a French-backed Welsh kingdom gained its independence, and England was split into north and south. Maybe the French could have advanced further claims on more English soil, or maybe the Scots would have quickly attacked the Percys. What would have happened to Ireland is unclear, but we could well assume that it would have been independent. Yet the Lords of Ireland had refused to back Owen, so maybe there could have been further wars between the new kingdoms for claims in Ireland. There may have been no Wars of the Roses, no Tudors, maybe not even colonisation, or maybe you'd have Ireland, Wales, North England, South England and Scotland all competing for colonies or maybe England would have just united instantly once again. So I'm going to ask you, what do you think would have happened? And to add on to that, can you think of any other partition plans? I've already done a video on the scramble for China in the 19th century, but can you think of any more? Leave yours in the comments below.